Hey there, everybody. This is Lance with National Parks at Night. Last week on our blog, Matt wrote about using filters in front of your lens to deal with problems associated with light pollution in night photography. There are two main problems to deal with. The first is undesirable color cast, usually in the sky, as a result of mixed lighting sources somewhere in the scene or in the distance that affect your photograph. The second problem is that of scattered light in the atmosphere that reduces the appearance of stars, causing dimmer stars not to show up in our photographs. This week, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques using Lightroom Classic to correct for light pollution in post-processing. Let's start with the easiest example. Okay, let's jump right into it with this first image. This was shot on Shai Shai Beach in Olympic National Park in Washington. And we're looking across the bay to Vancouver Island. And this glow in the sky is caused by the predominance of sodium vapor lights in Victoria, the largest city, well, pretty much the only city on Vancouver Island. So as I said, this is going to be a pretty easy fix. So we're going to take the either We shot this at 3850 Kelvin, which was the appropriate white balance when we were shooting due west out over the ocean. There was no moonlight, but it was completely overcast and foggy, as you can see. But that's kind of a typical white balance when you're working in a landscape situation. Now, what's happening here is the uh, sodium vapor lights from Victoria are reflecting off the clouds and turning everything yellow. So we take the eyedropper tool in the white, in the white balance and click in the cloud cover and it just removes all that yellow. So pretty easy, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you, that took it down to 2600 Kelvin plus two magenta. Okay, not bad. If you wanna go a little bit less, just a little bit warmer, we can move that slider back up again, wherever you might like it. Um, I typically do that. I'll, I'll, I'll click on a few spots in the image to get close and then manually move the temperature slider as needed to get where I want. I'm gonna go up just a little bit, 2852. All right, now um, we also have this red and magenta glow in the sky from this red light on top of the hill here. Let's go into the HSL panel. I'm gonna click on saturation, take the targeted adjustment tool and go into the image, place it over the area that I wanna desaturate and just scroll down. And what that's doing, you can see it's removing some red and some orange from the sky. Move it over here a little bit. And again, it's moving that, it's removing red and orange from the sky. Now this is taking red and orange from everywhere in the image that has that color. But the only thing that is that color is from this red light up on the hill. So as you can see over here, it's moving red and orange in approximately equal proportion. You may like that. You may want to just leave it the way it was. We can just go back here. Yeah, I don't know. It's a red light. It is what it is. The only way to make that go away completely would be to shift to a black and white image. And I don't think I want to do that. So again, you can desaturate it or leave it alone, but the easy fix was taking the yellow out of the sky from the sodium lights with the white balance. All right, let's look at the next image. So here's an image, a Milky Way shot, made at the Owens Valley Radio Observatory in the Eastern Sierra of California. This one should be pretty easy to get rid of that light pollution because it's predominantly yellow and orange, and there's not much else in the scene that contains those colors. I've already done my basic panel adjustments, as you can see over here. Now I'm just gonna go into the HSL panel. I'm gonna click on saturation. I'm gonna take the targeted adjustment tool, and I'm gonna go down here into the lower portion of the sky at the horizon, and just scroll down, and you can see that both the orange and the yellow sliders are going down and it has done a pretty darn good job of removing that light pollution from the sky. Now, um, this is where we started, 
and this is where we ended up. You'll notice that it also removed that yellow orange glow from the radio dish here as well. And that's a good thing because that was also receiving sodium vapor light pollution. So that's all it took for this one. If I wanted to, I could probably go in with a local adjustment brush and try to add a little bit of color in here at the horizon. But I think it's a pretty natural and realistic looking sky as it is. So I'm going to take the easy route on that one and say that this is done. Next image. Alrighty then, so here's an image from Lassen Volcanic National Park. This is on top of the Cindercone Volcano, and as you can see, I've got the Milky Way in the background. I've already done some adjustments to this image, but I haven't done anything about the light pollution li yet. As you can see, there is a yellow glow all along the horizon in the background. So I'm going to start with a local adjustment here. I'm going to take the local adjustment brush and I'm going to apply this across the entire horizon. You can see I've got a big feather on here and let's go down and take a look at the tools. The flow is set to 100%, the feather is set to 100%, the auto mask is off and that's what I'm looking for right here. So I'm just going to drag it all the way across the horizon. There we go and press the O key to hide and reveal the mask there. So yeah, there's our mask. I don't, I don't want it on the uh, mountains in the foreground there. So there are a couple of ways you can do that. I could then go and do a, sub, a minus brush, or I can try the range mask, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try color range mask first. And I'm going to take the picker in here and just click and drag a section and there it is. So now that's done a pretty good job of selecting what I'm looking for except for this area right in here. So I'm going to shift click and pick that spot as well and look perfectly it fills that in very nicely. Now let's zoom in. Yeah I think that's done a pretty good selection and all right, so I'm going to press the O key to hide that mask. I'm going to put the eyedropper tool back. I've got the mask selected. Now I'm just going to start by I'm going to scroll up here so you can see the tools. I'm going to desat desaturate my selection. And as I move the saturation slider to the left, that her the yellow is going out of the horizon. All right. Now, let's see if I can use the hue slider here and move that away from the yellow and towards the blue. Let's take the fine adjustment off and shift it. It goes quickly green. It's not really moving into the range that I would like to see. So I don't think this is going to work right here. I'm just going to double click that to reset it. All right. And go back to our original saturation slider. Move that down a little bit more. If I go all the way, you can see it just takes all the color out of the, the sky at the horizon and yeah still showing a little bit of color in there as well so I don't want to get rid of all that color I'm just going to take it down we're at about minus 60 percent right now now I can also go in here and change the temperature slider on the selection again notice this is just on the selection and now put some blue into the image. All right. So where did we start? There. Where do we end up? Here. That's actually looking pretty good. It hasn't removed all of the color from the horizon. Uh, there's still a little bit of discoloration along along the edge there, but I think compared to where we started. 
that's a pretty good and pretty realistic looking adjustment to clean out the light pollution. All right. I think I'm okay with that. I don't feel like it would be wise to try to make the entire sky the same blue tonality all the way down to the horizon. This looks pretty realistic. And that's what you're going for here, is you want an image that is believable and realistic. And I think we've done that pretty quickly and easily here. Let's take a look at another one. All right, so here's a scene in Lowell, Massachusetts that is was shot on a clear night with a full moon in the sky and mostly sodium vapor light illuminating the scene. Um, you can tell there's fairly strong light, direct light coming from the left, and then an overall glow on the entire image. I'm going to start out here. I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and click on the sidewalk because I know that's a neutral color. And I'm, I'm looking to make the sidewalk fairly neutral. That's a little bit too cool, so I'm just going to go over here, warm it up just a little bit, put the eyedropper tool away. Now this one, I think a gradient on the sky is going to be the way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to drag a gradient, put it over the sky area of the image. And so now you can see what's being covered. I'm going to take the range mask, choose color, take the eyedropper, and I'm going to click and drag over the sky and the smokestack. And so there we go. That's what our range mask is doing right now. If I move the amount slider to the left, there we go. It's taking that mask off of the trees and the foreground. And that's just the effect I was looking for. OK, so now I've got my mask selected. I've hidden it with the H key. and you notice that the sky is primarily magenta colored. So I'm going to move the tint slider away from magenta and into green, and that's going to change the color of the mask. I don't really want it quite that green. And now I'm going to move this uh, temperature slider over to the blue a little bit. And look at that. We've got a nice blue sky taking all that magenta out of there, and it didn't really affect the foreground very much. Now, let's just see what happens if we bring, I'm thinking about bringing the exposure down just a little bit to make it a little bit darker. There we go. That looks pretty darn good to me, and that was an easy fix. So, on to the next one. So here we have another scene from Lowell, Massachusetts, and this one's a little bit different because we have that sodium vapor glow on the clouds in the sky, and what looks to be metal halide or possibly mercury vapor light on the face of this building. How can I tell? Because this is kind of a cyan color as opposed to the, you know, the warm tones that we get from the sodium vapor. So this might take a little bit more work to, to mess around with. So um, let's see. We're going to go right in here and start off by neutralizing the sodium vapor by taking the white balance eyedropper tool and clicking on the clouds. And that does a pretty good job of neutralizing the sodium vapor, but look what it does to this color in here. It really makes that metal halide mercury vapor cyan color stand out. How about if we click in here and neutralize that? Well, we can set this to neutral, but it really exaggerates that uh, uh, sodium vapor glow in the sky. So let's go back here again, start where we started. I'm going to click on the cloud and neutralize the sodium vapor glow. That's going to be my starting point. All right, so now to get rid of this cyan cast on the face of the building here, I'm going to start with a local adjustment brush. I'm going to make sure that auto mask is selected. And I'm going to brush over the face of the building. And even though auto mask is selected, it is going over the edge just a little bit. You can see here there's a little spillover. I'm not worried about these black parts of the building because they're not really going to show much color. So I could go in and take the minus brush and try to clean that up. But what I'm going to start with here is go down, use the range mask, choose color. 
I'm going to take the picker here and I'm just going to pick one spot and see how that looks. Wow, okay, that does a pretty good job. It's removing the mass from most of the spill. There's a little bit over there. Now, how about if I move the amount slider to the left? Look at that. It cleans up my selection nicely. All right, I'm going to put the color picker away, press the O key to hide my mask, and now this is basically a black and white facade, but it's showing up as blue and cyan because of the, uh, the light pollution. So now I've got my mask selected. There it is. And how about if I just desaturate that? Wow. What do you know? Black and white with just, yeah, minus 65. That looks pretty darn good to me. So there we go. There's yet another example of removing light pollution in a different scenario. Um, this one was a little bit more complicated. We had to change the color in the sky first. We did that with the white balance eyedropper tool on the clouds to neutralize the sodium vapor. And then we did a local adjustment brush to correct the color on the facade of this building. So you can see working with color, hue, saturation, luminance, and the saturation slider in general, you can generally take care of light pollution. In conclusion, remember that you don't necessarily want to get rid of absolutely 100% of the color shifts because most of the time your images are going to look unnatural if you do so. Um, if the light pollution is so bad that you can't correct it no matter what you do, one last thing you could consider would be converting the image to black and white. So that's, uh, that's something that I often do in an environment that is lit 100% by sodium vapor light because it's generally not too attractive. So consider that for sodium vapor only scenes just convert to black and white. Otherwise, uh, I hope you found these tutorials useful and thanks for watching. <laughs>